What's going on, everyone? My name is Joseph Reynolds, and today joining me is the gentleman himself, Jalen Fuller, ahead of LFA. Obviously, it's a big fight coming up. How are you feeling for that fight, buddy? I'm feeling phenomenal. We're in great shape, and uh, I'm just happy to finally be back in there. It's been way too much time in between. Yeah, and to get back in the cage, obviously, your last fight was an unfortunate defeat. And it's been been a mixed bag of results in the last three. Uh, and now, obviously, you get the chance to get a win and start building a win streak for 2023. Is that the main goal now, to start building that win streak like you had at the start of your pro career? Uh, definitely. I, I'm looking to get this win streak going and really uh, stacking with finishes. I'm not looking to keep going to the scorecards. Yeah, and we take a look at your pro career so far. Obviously, you burst onto the scene really quickly. You've been with LFA for a while. Uh, and as of recent, you've really stepped up in the competition that you're taking on. Uh, to get these new opportunities and these new opponents and keep progressing as well, what's that been like for yourself as a fighter? Um, it's been a pretty big learning experience, honestly, to, especially with the steps up in competition. Uh, it's taught me that I can't just take whatever fight whenever with how little notice in between. Um, both of those fights that um, that I lost was a, I'd stepped up in weight class against Bruno you know, um, and he just won a fight at 205, uh, you know, so that's a little bit daunting of a task already in itself. But I think that the another lesson I've learned is that um, I'm good enough to hang in these spots, but I need to get to a point where I'm thriving and getting past that. Definitely. Uh, and when you are able to get in the cage, obviously, on, on any notice weight class above it, it obviously it says a lot about the mentality that you take towards fighting and how positive that is so do, do you look at your mentality as, as one of the things that's one of your strong points as a fighter definitely try to look at it that way but uh, i also try to remind myself that this is this is really more physical um i'm definitely on the other end of the spectrum when it comes to people who believe that fighting is more mental than physical i'm it's mostly physical than mental you need to get over uh, when you get into that cage. This is physical things that we're doing. No one cares what you think, how you're feeling uh, going into that cage. Once you're in there, he's looking to hit you in the face regardless. Yeah, and your last two opponents, obviously, you've gone in there. They've had more experience than you, but you've still, as you've mentioned before, you was able to hang with those opponents and show that you have got the skill set to deal with them. In terms of the difference to those opponents, to maybe someone who might have been 3-0, 4-0, what's the, the difference facing that sort of competition? They're very sure in themselves. Every, every step that they make, every move they make in that cage, it's very calculated uh, because it's worked for them time and time again. So it's that confidence that they bring into the cage, confidence in their skill set. There's no doubt. There's no moment for you to pick up on that hesitation because those are tools that they've used uh, to secure the victories that they have. Yeah, and when you do sort of take a look at your opponent, you mentioned getting back to finishing ways. Do you see that this is how this fight's going to go? And, and in terms of how you see the fight going, what is the ideal sort of route to victory for you in this fight, do you feel? Uh, definitely, we're looking to get back to our finishing ways in this fight in particular. This is a stand-up guy. This is my first opponent who also fancies himself a stand-up fighter. Everyone else has been a bit of a grappler or a collegiate wrestler, kind of along those lines. Um, I think the key to getting this done is going to be exposing him on his 3-4-3 uh, three, three, lead hook, rear hook, lead hook again combination that he likes to throw. It's his finishing sequence. His last four wins have come via it. So he knows that that's his go-to shot. That lead hook is his best punch. So for me, I'm looking to expose him right there on that counter uh, with most likely my lead leg high kick, um, parrying, in the, parrying or pulling on the hook and hitting him with my left straight into the spin and wheel kick. Those are the ways that I really want this fight to finish. Yeah, and when, and when you do get those prospects, obviously you won't be looking past this fight at all, but getting a win here, what does that see you sort of wanting to build upon for the rest of this year as well, looking at the things like that? If we're able to get this win and come out cleanly on top, uh, I'm, I'm really looking to also maybe get my first main event in the LFA. I feel like that that's long overdue. Um, and also I'm looking to gather my first championship under their banner this year as well before seeing what we can do after that. Yeah, and when you take a look at a promotion like LFA, obviously there's been some great names that have come out of there who've all been impressive, obviously. To fight under such a promotion for the time that you have and, and have the results that you have, 
what's that sort of like seeing where some of the top guys who've been in that promotion have gone on to do? It's just, um, it's very motivating. So as everyone knows, like for a regional scene, uh, LFA is pretty much as big as it gets uh, in America anyway. And for that, to know that they've kept me here as long as they've kept me, they focused on building me and testing me with real competition. Uh, it says a lot that, uh, of their faith in my abilities and my results have given me faith in my abilities too. Yeah, and you mentioned that with the regional scene, obviously I'm a UK guy, I know a lot about the UK scene, but I don't know too much about the American regional scene. What does that sort of look like for early pros and, and the amateurs as well in terms of the opportunities that they have and, and the differences to how the training is there than what it might be in a different country or how they get fights early on in the career as opposed to other places? Uh, so our regional scene at the very base base level is very messy. You know, we don't have like that. Uh, I mean, like over in the UK, they have cage warriors, which is just massive, massive. You put in, you can always throw a guy who's in cage warriors in there with maybe a top 15 guy in any major organization, and they'll probably hang with him. Uh, it's a very high level over there. But here, I would say until you get to like the LFA or Fury or CFFC, it's all kind of um, thin. I'd say it's very thin. You know, a lot of people will just go onto a Facebook messenger page and be like, hey, I'm looking for a fight. Um, I'm here in this place and this is my record. And then some random promoter will be like, I got a fight for you. You know, drive yourself on down and we can get something going. You know, it's very um, exploitive, I would have to say. Yeah, and when you are able to, 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 to get to these promotions, obviously the sports, it's a very expensive sport to get into and to stay into as well. Obviously, when you do get into these promotions that might pay a little bit better and there might be more opportunities for sponsorships and things like that, how much does that sort of help yourself in terms of from a sponsorship perspective or people supporting your career? How important is that for you still relatively early on in your pro career? Is, is pretty decent in the LFA, uh, but the sponsorship opportunities is, is where it really comes into play. Uh, being on UFC Fight Pass is such a, a, a huge um, platform. So a lot of guys want to get involved in that. And if they see that you have a fight there, it really opens up sponsorship opportunities. Yeah, and then just one of the final few things for myself is, obviously I've got mostly a UK fan base, so they might not be too aware of what's going on in the American scene at the moment, but if there were one thing that you could tell them that the gentleman is all about and what he's coming to do in 2023, what would that message be to those people, my friend? It is solely to entertain. 2023 is going to be about entertaining and stacking up my finishes. I'm trying to get as many first round, no more than second round finishes out here. I'm looking to get it done fast and furious, and that's what they can expect from me over across the pond. Whatever. Well, that is everything from myself. If you just like to take a chance, try any sponsors, anything like that, obviously just feel free to go ahead, buddy. All right. Thank you. Uh, it's got to be my team at Duke City MMA. Everything that they do for me. Um, my manager, Ricky Cottonsetti, over at Dimin Diminium 8 Management. Um, and then lastly, um, El Chino's. Uh, they've been a huge part of my camp this time around. They're a meal prep sponsor, and they've handled my meals the entire time. Well, that's everything from me. Obviously, keep your eyes on the gentleman himself, LFA. It's going to be a great show. It's on the Fight Pass as well. I know a lot of people watching will already have that. Be sure to tune in. I appreciate your time very much, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.